continuing our deep dives into Azure path service behavior in terms of regional failover when using private links. Let's turn our attention now to Cosmos DB. In this diagram here, I've got my two Azure regions, West US and East US, and I've deployed a Cosmos database, which we know one of the main benefits of Cosmos is its ability to replicate data to many global endpoints. A lot of customers get value in that in terms of the user performance with their applications. See here, I've got an Azure Cosmos DB, MongoDB deployed over here, and I've configured it to replicate data to East US and West US. At the moment, I've got multi-region rights turned off, but I'll come back to that in a second. So let's just think about how this would operate if you weren't using private link in terms of regional failover. You can see at the moment my endpoint, which is adam-cosmos.mongo.cosmos.azure.com. A public endpoint, when I look up inside of public DNS, I see down here, I've got an initial CNAME redirecting to private link. We understand that because I'm using private link. But the point stands, even without private link being used here, ultimately what I get back is a CNAME pointing to a cluster here inside of West US, which returns a public IP if I'm coming from a non Azure DNS private zone linked VNet. So ultimately, if I've got an endpoint here that's accessing my Cosmos DB over the public endpoint without using private link, I will get back this public IP, which ultimately routes my traffic to my replica here in West US. And that's reflected in our portal here, which we see our right region is currently West US. So if I had a complete regional outage, let's add that to our diagram and explain what would happen in a public scenario. Okay, so just ignore the private link bits for the moment. Let's imagine that entire region goes down and my endpoints inside of the red region now, which is this other virtual machine with a different IP, they continue to want to use that data. They continue to use the same string, which is this adam-cosmos.mongo.cosmos.azure.com string in their application. And if they were using public DNS resolution, not using private link, they would again go back out to public DNS and they would get back a different CNAME. And with Cosmos, we can simulate this uh, failover using the manual failover option here. So I'll do that now and I'll show you the change in public DNS. Okay, my failover is complete. That took about uh, 60 seconds. If I go back to my public dig website here and redig the same FQDN, we can see that I'm now getting back an East US cluster for the replica of my data. See, whereas before West US, now it's East US. So my virtual machine over here would now be talking to the copy of the data inside of Cosmos in East US without any other DNS changes required. That's all happened in public DNS. Now it is important to call out that it's not just in a failover scenario where your replicas in other regions get used. If I was to go into my database here and enable multi-region writes, one of the benefits of Cosmos is you can write to the database in multiple places. And this is captured in documentation. What's important to understand is you wouldn't be changing where you point your API calls at. They would still go to the global FQDN. And when they go to that global FQDN, there's something called endpoint discovery that happens, which can determine the location of the client making the API call and the desire to write to the database, and then return back the writable and readable locations, as we see here. And the client gets back the endpoints, and they're associated with the other FQDN endpoints we'll see later in private link. The really important concept to understand here is that the client still has to make the initial call to the global FQDN to be able to get back the reachability to what regions it can use for the most optimal data transfer. When we think about using private link now, we have to consider that this initial global FQDN, which is currently mapped to a private endpoint in my primary region, is going to get used in a failover scenario. So I'll flick my Cosmos DB back to having the primary right region as West US, if I just refresh this page, you'll see that 
the GUI here was lagging our technical reality. We see here the primary is East US. I'm going to fill that back over to West US. So with private link enabled and with Azure DNS private zone linked to my VNet, my virtual machine here now, when it makes an outbound call for the global FQDN here, as we see the first CNAME it'll get is the private link. It's going to get returned this record here inside of my global Azure DNS private zone, which I've got linked here to both VNets. And what I want to show here, the main point of this video is, is that Cosmos is an example of a service which if you're using private link and you have a complete regional outage where your private endpoints are, you are going to need to plan on how to accommodate that change in the other regions when it comes to making use of your global FQDN. Here's my private endpoint that I've got deployed for Cosmos. And what's interesting to note is that, yes, it's a single NIC, but it's got three IP addresses, one for the global FQDN, and then one for each regional FQDN, representing the regions where you've replicated your data to. As I said before, once the client's an endpoint discovery, it can make use of those regional FQDNs for more optimal data transfer. And of course, we have to represent those FQDN calls as IP addresses in our VNet. And those are mapped here, which we also see inside of our Azure DNS private zones config, where we've made those mappings for these IP addresses, which I've put on the diagram here. So if I jump on my virtual machines here that are integrated into a VNet that's linked to this private DNS zone, what we see under normal conditions here is that we will get back the IP address 4.10, which is mapped to my global endpoint in my Azure DNS private zone. And you see that happens also for Spoke 2. Spoke 2 is over here in East US, despite it being in East US. Of course, it gets back the same IP address. It's a common global zone here. So at this point, rather than belabor the directions and considerations that you have for this model, what we can see is that the concerns that we have for the common global FQDN for Cosmos are exactly the same that we have for Azure Storage, for example. If we imagine a scenario now where this entire region fails, the region's gone down, this virtual machine comes online, tries to access your same FQDN. At this point, it's linked to this Azure DNS private zone. It's getting back the same IP address, 4.10 which exists in a region that is down. You have the same considerations as storage. How do you get a private endpoint in the red box that can be leveraged for my global FQDN? And the answer is, well, you deploy more private endpoints, which can update the global zone here, or you plan ahead and you have regional separated zones. So this one linked over here, this one linked over here, all covered in the articles that are listed below. But the main point here is that uh, Cosmos, despite it being a global service that you can replicate to many regions, synchronous rights to more than one region. In fact, you can go beyond uh, two, three, four regions with Cosmos. It's a very much a global service. The point here is that with the region down scenario and your DNS integration, you need to think about having a local private endpoint and the impact that has on your DNS planning. I do just want to jump in here and add a little additional wedge of video to make sure we're capturing the full picture here. So after discussing these Cosmos regional failover scenarios with some internal Microsoft colleagues, who I leave gratitude to below in the comments, check out their profiles, etc. They've got some great content. I want to make sure we capture the, the full spectrum of possible failover scenarios. So everything I've said so far, including this, the client still has to make the initial call to the global FQDN is based around the idea that your code is using the global FQDN. Sam Gowdy linked me to this great document on one of the derivatives of Cosmos DB that we have, Gremlin, which has some interesting documentation on how you can change your application code to make use of these regional FQDNs. You can see here there's some code which basically goes into the API, finds out what regions you're deployed in, and then updates your application code to specifically make use of those FQDNs. You can see here, for example, the host name in the code 
we reference in the regional endpoint. And what I want to highlight, which is why I made this sort of addendum, is that if you update your application code to make use of multiple regional endpoints and your application code tries those endpoints either in a round robin fashion or simultaneously or in a priority based fashion, there is a scenario here where Cosmos DB will work with a single private DNS zone. Let me update my diagram to explain that now. Okay, so I've made some subtle changes, but let's understand what I've done here. So on the private endpoint configuration here inside of West US, I've got a mapping of 4.10 on the private endpoint going to my global URI endpoint. And then 4.11 goes to a private endpoint for my West US endpoint within Cosmos. But then over in the red box, which is in my other region in East US, I've got a private endpoint deployed with an IP address inside of that VNet, should be 2.11 actually. And that private endpoint is mapped to specifically my East US FQDN within Cosmos. I've got two private endpoints here, regional private endpoints. Because I'm using that single zone, I can't have multiple A records pointing to the same FQDN. Now there are some downsides here, for example, if anything in the green box, for whatever reason, maybe you get the code wrong, the prioritization wrong, you're doing round robin, in terms of how the available replicas are used, you can imagine if this green virtual machine tried to contact Cosmos in East US, it would have to go via this private endpoint here. So it'd have to traverse your private network in your VNet peering or your virtual WAN, et cetera, to ingress over here. And that's slightly suboptimal in terms of not using the private link SDN as you could be, which is using a local private endpoint. The benefit I wanted to highlight is, let's imagine again that that region goes down. The region's offline. Your virtual machine fails over or somehow your application code fails over. Your application code is instantiated within some sort of compute logic in the red box. And in that code, the logic that you've stipulated is a, you should try to write to both West US and East US. Maybe you've written the code, which is, hey, you should try West US, otherwise try East US. And you haven't tried to utilize the global FQDN in your code, kind of similar to how this Gremlin example is used here. Now in that scenario, you would be able to continue working because you've got a local private endpoint with a unique A record in your common global zone that would keep working automatically. But like I say, there are some downsides. The main one, which is in my, albeit limited exposure to Cosmos, it seems like the global FQDN is primarily used in most scenarios, even for endpoint discovery. And the second point, which we've covered in many other previous videos is even if you get this to work in this way to accommodate the use of a single zone, you do have that suboptimal flow possibility under normal conditions. Um, so the fallback pattern here, which would give you the, the best of both, both worlds, which would give you the best of both worlds is to, as I said earlier, have a Azure private DNS zone here, Azure private DNS zone here with local copies of private endpoints for all of your global FQDNs. And, but the actual use of multiple Azure DNS private zones per region has got much wider considerations. Again, see the article down below on multi-region private link. Anyway, back to the conclusion, just thought we should insert that to make sure we're having a, a fully rounded discussion. Thanks. So I hope you found this one useful. Check out the other videos for the other services and check out the link below for the white paper that categorizes the Azure Pass services in terms of if they can support this single zone global model or not. Thanks a lot. See you in the next one.